Hi, this is going to be a quick screencast for how to do the video analysis with Logger Pro for the air track videos that we shot today in class. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go to the place on your favorites toolbar where you've allocated space for the physics ramble. And the videos are on here for period four. And if you scroll a little farther down, you can find the videos for period one. Um, all you'll need to do is just go in and click on that file and save it somewhere on your computer and that downloaded quite quick. It's nice to be at school with a fast connection. Might take a little bit longer at home. The next thing you're going to need to do is open up Logger Pro and it should open, look pretty much like it does at school, but what you'll need to do is go up to insert and slide down to movie and you'll need to then navigate to wherever the file is saved on your computer. So I know here it's going to be in my documents in the download folder. Um, and hey, what do you know, this is my second attempt at making the video, so I'd already downloaded it once. There we go, I double click on it, pops open. It's kind of a large video, so you can resize it a little bit, drag it around. And then if I hit play. Okay, so you can see it looks a little bit, uh, a little bit jumpy, but hopefully that'll smooth out later on. So now you're going to need to do a couple of things here. Um, down in the bottom right corner, see the little button here with the three red dots. Click on that, and that opens up the Logger Pro video analysis toolbar over here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is identify a scaling ratio for the program uh, by clicking on this little meter stick looking icon here. And hey, what do you know, I put a meter stick in the video, so all you need to do is click and drag from one edge of that meter stick to the other, as, uh, as close as you can, and then just identify for the program, that's a meter. So now it knows how many pixels uh, corresponds to one meter. That'll allow, to get, allow us to get some data out of this thing. Um, one thing I forgot to do, back this all the way up to the beginning, but that doesn't affect the scaling at all. Um, the other thing, and this is sad, but this is why I'm doing this video over again, is I kind of noticed that the camera appears to be a little bit tipped. So what I'm going to do is um, set the origin and the frame of reference here a little bit. Let me just double check my, my tools. So if I click on this, um, uh, you know, where do you want to put this exactly? Well, I'm going to click and put it right there. And then if you look at this, oh, that's, that's just awful. This thing is tilted, so I'm just going to grab that and drag until I feel like I've got it lined up. Let's see. Man. Now, part of the problem is because of the nature of the video. Uh, things that are in the middle of the frame are closer to the camera than things that are far away. So you can see, you know, in reality, that beam is not bent, but it appears to be bending away from this reference frame that I've just attached. So just something to be aware of. Now I'm going to go through a process of identifying points in the video. So click on this add a point button and this is just my way of telling the computer where the glider is located in each frame. So you can see as I click, now I'm going to run into problems, um, it goes to the next frame after I click. So this is just stepping through frame by frame. Um, some suggestions here, try to find a, a place on the glider that's easy to identify. Um, so for example, it would be ill-advised maybe to, to try to put the data point right in the center because gauging where the center is at might be tough. So what I did is I looked for the leading edge and I can kind of line up my crosshairs with that. Do whatever works for you. So I'm laying out a succession of dots. I'm doing this with a touchpad, so you can see I'm moving up and down a little bit, perhaps. Just keep that in mind later when you go in to analyze the data. And 20 or so data points should be sufficient, I think, to get the idea. Just looking at the dots, hopefully you have some insight into what this graph might end up looking like. Um, I recommend 
clicking on the select point tool before switching off the video. In the past, I've had issues where it just starts to insert random points uh, even if I'm not on the video. So there we go. And if I click on the screen behind, you can see we have a graph for horizontal and vertical position. And since I established the reference frame uh, with the x-axis more or less in line with the beam, you can see it's saying that the vertical position kind of stays right around zero the whole time. Uh, the red data points on here represent the horizontal position. And you look at that graph, that's pretty awesome. Uh, don't be disappointed or ashamed if your graph doesn't look as good as mine. Uh, I'm just really good at this. What we're going to actually be keying in on today, though, is not the position graph, but the velocity graph. So if I click on the axis label there, I can select it to display x velocity. So that'd be velocity in the horizontal direction. And you're looking at it, and oh my gosh, Mr. Harding, the velocity is all over the place. It goes really low, it goes really high. Always a good idea when you're looking at a graph, go over and take a gander at the y-axis. And if you look at this, it's scaling it from 0.95 to 1.1-ish. The reason it does that as a default is it's trying to display, or trying to use as much space on the graph as possible. So it's easy for you to see the data points for whatever reason. Um, and here, though, we're going to prefer to auto scale from zero, and I'll show you why. So I go to Analyze, select Auto Scale from zero, click that, and that makes it a little bit easier to see that, yeah, it's meandering, but my gosh, it seems to just sort of be meandering somewhere around this value of 1. And it might be a good idea to go ahead and click on 1 and just change that y-axis value manually. Now it makes it a little bit easier to see the, the general trend or pattern in the data if it's not all hiding up on the top edge. Once you've crafted your graph, it's a good idea to double click on it and give it a title so we can distinguish it from your classmates because we're all going to be graphing more or less the same thing. air track with no strings attached. Done. Now that title shows up. So if I go to print this off, you know, were you to hand this in, I'd be able to tell it apart from the others. If you hit print graph, it'll just print the graph. It's going to ask you to put some other information on there. I'm not going to bother with it. But yeah, I could just go print that graph now. Or if you're so inclined, you can right click on it, copy it, and then paste it into a Word document and deal with it in there as you would any kind of an image. So now it's in there. Um, I can change the layout and resize this puppy so it takes up more space. Fairly nice. Okay, so that's more or less the, the technique or whatever you want to call it that you're going to need to use for the first graph. And then what you'll need to do is go back into Logger Pro, save this if you want, um, but then select New and repeat that process for the other graph. So you're going to have to go back to the Ramble and download the second video. Maybe. Ooh, we can have an internet race here, see who can download it the, the quickest. But anyways, once you've got that file down, uh, follow that same process of insert movie into Logger Pro. For the second video where we have the string attached, I'm going to ask that you analyze the entire left to right motion. So as the glider moves from the left side all the way till it makes contact on the right side, please go ahead and, and mark all those data points and that's the velocity time graph that we'll be interested in taking a look at in class on Friday. So best of luck to you and as always if you have any questions don't be afraid to hit me up with an email.